are speaking to the managers who report to you. And what you're talking to them about is the importance of coaching, when you're coaching your employees, about getting, um, about asking really curious questions, and sometimes the, the need to drop your agenda in coaching conversations, okay? So I'm gonna share a story with you, and then I'm gonna pull out what might, might have been the lesson from this story, and then we're gonna take apart some of the elements of an effective story in, um, in communication, okay? So, here's my story. It's about eight in the morning, the sun is beating down through the trees, and I'm in a green tent, and already it's getting hot and stuffy. I unzip the tent, I step out, I put, shove my feet into my Converse running shoes, I throw on my red flannel shirt, and I zip the tent closed, and I start running down the path. I can hear the sounds of the lake beating on the shore, and the sound of my own heart pounding. I am a senior counselor. This is my first real job, summer job, and I'm on an overnight with a group of 12 10-year-old girls, and one of them has taken off into the woods, and I don't know where she is. So I'm running through the woods. I can hear the wind in my ears, the sound of the wave pounding on the shore, and I'm panicked. I'm thinking, if I don't find this kid, I am in big trouble. So I'm calling her, I'm calling her, her name is Lisa, and finally I hear a voice from up above me somewhere. I hear, I'm up here. And I look up, and there is Lisa, and she is sitting in a tree. And in that tree, she's got a large hacksaw that we use to cut firewood, and she's slowly and methodically cutting off the branch that she is sitting on. <laughs> so on one hand, I'm relieved to have found her. On the other hand, I'm a little bit worried about the saw. So I said, Lisa, give me the saw, you've got to come down. Um, you know, you're not allowed to take that saw. You're not allowed to leave the campsite without us. And I give her a big lecture. And she says, I don't care, I'm not coming down, forget it. You can just leave me alone here. So I said, well, that's not going to happen. So I continue to threaten her. I tell her what the consequence is going to be. If she doesn't come down, we're going to end the overnight. We're going to have to go back to camp. She's going to ruin it for everybody. No dice. She says, I don't care, I hate this overnight, I hate you. So I think, okay, this is not going well. I look at Lisa, she's, like I said, 10 years old. Her hair is cut short on one side, long on the other. She's wearing a Duran Duran t-shirt, high top running shoes, just like me. Lisa's kind of the leader in the cabin. She's loud, she's mouthy. I'm a little bit scared of her, is the truth. So I say, Lisa, you know, if you don't come down, we're gonna have to go back to camp, we're gonna have to get the director. You know, he might actually have to call your parents and they might actually, you know, take you home. She says, I don't care. I don't like this camp, and my parents don't care what I do. So, I escalate the threats, I try everything, nothing works, she won't come down. I feel like crying myself at this point. So, I finally sit down on a log beside me, and I say, okay, you know what, I give up. And we sit there in silence for a few minutes. Finally, it dawns on me to ask Lisa why she's left the campsite in the first place. She tells me she got into an argument with some of the other girls, and that all of the other girls have turned on her, the way little girls sometimes do. And she says, uh, nobody likes me. I don't have any real friends here. So I talked to her a little bit about that. I asked her some more questions. And I started to get curious because I'm wondering, I thought Lisa was the, the leader of this group. So I started asking her some questions about you know, why she has this conflict with these kids and what she meant by when she said her parents don't care when she does. So she starts to tell me about how, you know, her parents, she doesn't feel like her parents love her as much as her other siblings. She's kind of the, the bad apple in the family. She always gets in a lot of trouble. And eventually she bursts into tears. So I'm able finally to coax her, give me the hacksaw from the tree and coax her down. And I find her sitting beside me, crying into my arms. And I'm relieved, right? Because I'm thinking, okay, not only have I managed to get Lisa down from the tree and get the saw back from her, but I realize that I have had my first real moment of leadership as a you 17-year-old know, here, and that I have been able to successfully turn this kid around. So eventually, maybe the coax her back and we go back to the campsite and we were able to continue with it. So that's my story. What this story taught me is that sometimes when we're in a leadership role, we can get very, very caught up on what the consequences are, 
on what the policies might be, on mandating behavior, on um, compliance. Whereas sometimes when we follow our curiosity and we ask the right questions of our employees, we go in places that we had not anticipated. And we're able to uncover some underlying needs that we never would have seen. And so what we as leaders in our organization can do is we can start to think about, a little differently, about how we coach our own employees. Okay, so that's my story. So I'm going to pause the story there. And in a moment what we're going to do is we're going to take apart some of the elements of this story. And we're going to look at how, um, what kinds of things are used to tell the story. Um, in a way that, that, will, that the audience will remember. 